I promise you it's only by the grace of God, nothing I ever done, uh, which you'll hear in my story. But uh, like he said, my name is Richie Howard, and I, by the grace of God, I'm a minister on staff here at the church. And uh, by the grace of God, I got a wonderful godly wife. Uh, by the grace of God, I somehow got a good marriage. And uh, by the grace of God, I got a little 15-year-old boy who's who's amazing, who's uh, saved and baptized and a member of the church. Uh, the only thing I can tell you that is the reason all that is true is, is the power and the grace of God. Because although our past does uh, impact us as we grow older, um, it don't define us. And uh, because everything in my past points to a bad marriage, a rotten dad, and certainly not a, a minister. So it, the, the way I grew up points to the opposite of all that. So what in the world could have happened to make all that happen was well, just the power and the grace of God. And there's a scripture in the Bible uh, that says, nobody comes to the Father unless the Spirit draws him. Now I've never heard that scripture. I've never heard any scripture, to be honest with you, that I can ever remember or could certainly ever quote uh, before the day I got saved. Or my, my example of marriage growing up was uh, sitting down uh, in my room with the door shut with my ear up to the door listening to my parents fight and I was waiting to hear my mama scream my name because when she screamed my name I knew that knew I, I needed to run in there and get in between them. Uh, so that's kind of my example of, of marriage and growing up in that environment you can imagine all the things that come along with that which is drugs and alcohol and uh, the, basically the opposite of growing up in church and I think looking back uh, knowing that scripture today uh, everybody that I've heard ever heard a testimony somehow at some point uh, God drew them but uh, for a lot of people it's they, they grew up in the church and at some point finally one Sunday uh, after hearing the story of Jesus many times or hearing many sermon after sermon after sermon uh, they was like, okay, it's time. I got to go. God's drawing them. They step out of the aisle and walk up. But what about the people that don't go to church? What about the people that grew up in a chaotic uh, family and an alcohol and drug addicted family? What about those people? How do they come to know the Lord? Well, sometimes, you know what? It's through a, a basketball outreach. Sometimes it's through just random circumstances that God orchestrates that we never even realized it was God orchestrating. Mm -hmm. But for me, uh, in 2004, I was uh, addicted to alcohol, drugs, I sold drugs, uh, was addicted to them, and uh, was kind of at a, just a bottom in my life. But one, the one and only passion I had, kind of like may, maybe y'all guys basketball, mine was riding motorcycles. And uh, I grew up riding them, I loved them, and loved riding fast, and loved anything dangerous. And anyway, so uh, at this particular time in my life, I didn't have one. But I get a phone call one Saturday, and it was a, a radio station DJ on the other end of the phone. And he, he said, hey, this is Jeff Kidd from Y96 radio station. Is this Richie Howard? And I said, yeah. And he said, uh, well, we, we want you to know that you're the proud new owner of a Vulcan Classic 1500cc motorcycle worth $10,000. And I said, yeah, right. Click and hung up the phone. <laughs> well, it immediately rang again. He said the same exact thing, and then he said, did you did you enter your name in a drawing? And I had this flashback of this, where I used to pay my light bill with this little box up on the counter with a picture of a motorcycle on it, and it had a little uh, stack of uh, little things you tear off. You know, you write your name and your address, phone number, you drop it in there, you never think of it again. Well, I remember doing that, and I was like, wait a minute, yeah, I did enter my name in a drawing. And he said, uh, well, we had over 3,000 entries, and we drew your name. And I said, well, that's great. Where's this thing at? So I come get it. He said, well, it don't even have oil or gas in it or a battery or anything. He said, but you can come down on Monday to the uh, Kawasaki shop to pick it up. Well, I, f I figured that one, uh, it could still be a scam. Two, I probably wasn't going to be able to drive it home because I thought, well, surely I got to pay taxes on it. I had no money. I didn't have a helmet. I borrowed a helmet from a friend just in case they did let me drive it home. And I got to this place. And um, they slid a piece of paper to me and it said paid in full and it had the amount of the bike, the amount of the taxes and zero balance. So I hopped on this brand new bike, drove it home as fast as I could get there, 
parked it behind the house just in case somebody was there to steal the scam. Uh, and, uh, you know, the next day I remember I said, I'm going to stay sober this afternoon. And, and I'd then been locked up several times for drinking and driving. So I, I, I tried not to do that anymore, but I said, I'm going to stay sober this afternoon and take this brand new bike on a ride. I'd never had a brand new bike. And anyway, day after day, I said the same thing over and over and said the same thing over and over, but I never would. So every day I would just pull this, this brand new machine and sit it out in my yard and sit there in a chair and, and drink and, and look at it. I was considering getting rid of it and uh, just because I couldn't stay sober. And uh, anyway, I um, was on a job site one day. I worked on the air conditioners and I was walking out of this building one and, and on the on the wall right beside the door of this building I was walking out of had a, a, a pegboard like where you can hang flyers on the wall like announcements or whatever and, and it caught my eye because it had a picture of a motorcycle on it. Well I took it off the wall and I don't really remember reading it that day but I, I mean right then I, I know I had to it but I didn't pay attention or I probably would have threw it away but I stuck it in my pocket. I got home that night and got liquored up like I always did and was stumbling to my bed about midnight unpacking my uh, pockets and I pulled that flyer out and I read it again and it said uh, it said Biker Sunday and it had the name of a church and it said like Food, Fun, and Fellowship and had a pastor's name and phone number and I was like what in the world is this pastor, church, and bikers why, well, how does all this mix? kind of like basketball in church, you know how does that mix? well God uses all things and God uses our passions to draw us to himself. Well, mm. I thought to myself, well, I'm just going to call this preacher and see what in the world he's talking about, what this is, what this is about. Well, it was midnight, and I was drunk, and uh, that's not a good combination when you call a preacher. But this preacher answered the phone, and I explained to him that I had found this flyer, that I had won this motorcycle, and he said, he said, it sounds like divine intervention that you come. And I said, well, I don't know what you're talking about, preacher. I don't know what that is, but I'm not coming to your church. I don't like preachers. And I told him, went on to tell him all about my life. And he said, well, Richie, I'd love to meet you. And I said, well, preacher, did you just hear what I told you? <laughs> and he said, he said, yeah, Richie, I'd love to meet you. And, and something happened to me right then, and I started crying. Now, I'll admit it was a drunk cry, but still, I started crying, and I couldn't figure out why. And I know, and I went to bed crying, thinking about that preacher and how I wanted to meet that ex. Uh, and on this side was people dressed kind of like I am right now. Just, you know, your average. There wasn't no suits and ties or nothing, but they was, you know, just dressed normal. And uh, I went and sat far back of the room, and they started singing songs. And uh, the bikers started raising their hands, and they was praising God. And I started looking at their arms, and their arms was covered in tattoos. And I'm like, man... And I looked over here at the church members and they was okay with these people in their church and you know I was getting real confused and then I seen uh, I seen on the back of these bikers vests was a cross you know and most of the bikers I've seen they'd be skulls or pistons or whatever uh, patches with vulgar language on it and, but these guys had a cross on their patch and I was like what is going on here anyway after they they sang and, and worship God um, I observed that and the, the pastor got up and said that uh, uh, introduced one of the bikers and said uh, he's going to come up and give his testimony and I remember when I heard that I'm like how's he going to give a testimony he's not in court <laughs> and I didn't understand I thought you know a testimony was something you only did in court so I'm really like what is he going to say and uh, so he starts talking and he starts telling about his life and how uh, he had lived a rough lifestyle and I could relate to it and and then he said that he had overdosed on uh, cocaine and he was in the hospital and a minister had come to visit him in the hospital. Then what he went on to share, share the story of Jesus and how Jesus came and he lived the perfect life that that, that guy couldn't live. And I related to that. Uh, but then he said that he he, uh, he prayed to, uh, to for God to forgive him of his sins and he placed his faith in Jesus that day. And I've heard of that. And, and, and I may even thought I'd done that before, but I never, there's never any power behind it. There's never anything ever changed in my life. I thought it was just something in hopes that you would get to heaven. And, uh, but then what the guy went on to tell me was that how 
that had changed his life and that uh, he started sharing scriptures about being a new creation and I'm like wow I've never heard that before you know I've lived in the south I've heard the story of Jesus going through the cross and about how he was raised from the dead but I've never heard that he could make you a new creation and uh, all things could change and, and what I desperately needed in my life was, was a change mm. and what I concluded sitting back there in the back of that church was somehow, some way, that all these things had to have lined up perfectly for me to get there to that church that day to hear that gospel message that Jesus could save a wretched man like me because he did it for a man like that. And then the man went on to share how his life was now. And he was now a uh, uh, one of the leaders in a Christian Christian bike club. And they their ministry was to reach bikers who was going wayward and going the opposite way of God and I couldn't do anything but backtrack from that moment on to uh, me waking up that morning with the overwhelming desire to go there backing up to when I called the preacher I said well if he hadn't answered the phone I wouldn't have been there and then I thought well if he'd answered the phone but he had, he had kind of you know ticked me off or something I wouldn't have been there then I backed up well what if I hadn't a, uh, found that flyer what if I hadn't got that that particular service call that day or what if I hadn't uh, went to uh, see if I could actually went get that bike without paying taxes and I just kept adding everything up to what led me there that day and I had to conclude that only the sovereign God of the world wanted me to hear that message that day and that was how he got me there to get saved that day and to change my life forever and I'm here to tell you that God will use basketball God will use Pastor T. God will use Pastor Michael. God will use these children. God will use your grandma and granddaddy. He'll use the police. He'll use prison. Mm. He'll use whatever it takes to draw you. Because the Bible says uh, the wages of our sin is death. And then comes the judgment. But if I'm covered in the blood of Christ, it ain't based on my best efforts. It ain't based based on anything other than what Christ did on the cross. And that's the message I wanted to come share with you today. That God is, it says he is not willing that any should perish. And that he's using whatever it takes. And he may have, you may be able to backtrack all the steps that got you here in these tables today to, uh, to, share, with the, to share this message with you. Now how did I, how did I, uh, from a background to, to that, to get to be a minister on staff? Well, that's, that's a whole other story. And God, will, and, I'm, and I'm convinced that God will fulfill His purpose in your life whenever you fully say, I'm yours, Lord. And that's exactly what happened in my life, and that's exactly what can happen in any of y'all's lives. Now, Pastor, Pastor how, how long have you uh, been a minister on staff here? Three years. Okay. All right. Well, a minister one year. Um, actually, yesterday was one year. The 15th was one year as a minister. I was on staff. I started out in maintenance. I didn't have any theological background. I had no ministry training. My background was construction. But I knew God had called me to ministry, and I was just faithful where God allowed me to minister. And that, and, and that led to me doing maintenance here at the church. And being here at the church doing maintenance led me to being able to take seminary classes to get the training I needed. It allowed me to get ministry experience uh, while on campus to... Uh, uh, people coming up that needed ministering too, and and that's how God helped me fulfill my purpose without a resume, because I didn't have a resume that said, "Hey, would you hire me to be a, a preacher or a pastor on staff here?" They would have laughed at me. But God again put me in the position He wanted me in to get me to where He wanted to get me, and He's probably got many of you in that same position <coughs> right now. What about your wife, man? Uh, your wife's pretty messed up too before. Yeah, she used to be my bartender. 20 years ago yeah yeah she uh her her testimony is is quite quite the same i mean she was she was strung out on drugs she was uh lived a life of uh, of drunkenness and concerts and just wilding out she had four abortions and one was a set of twins Mm. she's in full-time ministry today forgiven walking set free ministering to people that was just like her what what, what if somebody asked said to you man Maybe you just had a, some kind of, I don't believe in Jesus. Maybe something happened to you. Maybe you just lucked up. What would you say to somebody that says something like that? They just, maybe it's just luck, you know? Maybe you just decided to just be moral instead of just doing what you did. Well, how would you answer that? Well, I tried that. 
and it didn't work. Just being moral, you'll fail every time. You'll eventually go back to, and I ain't, I ain't went back. When God set my feet up on a rock, told me to use his word as a lamp to my feet, I ain't went back. When was the last time you watched porn? Five years. And uh, if, I, if I had to ask you this, if anybody here says, man, I, I think I'm ready to give up my life to follow Jesus, what was the first step you think they need to do if they say, man, I'm ready to follow Jesus? What's the first step you think they need to take? Take the faith in whatever you got on, either whether it's yourself, whether it's money, whether it's women, whether it's pornography, whether it's drugs. You place some faith in it. That's your idol. Take it, repent from it, place it on Jesus, and it's finished work on the cross. Uh, last question. When was the last time you done drugs, alcohol? Five Did, years. Five years? Five years. Did you have any, with, like, like how was the struggle? When, like, when you surrendered and gave up pornography and drugs, alcohol, how was the struggle? Uh, what made? How did you get out of that lifestyle other than you had that encounter with Jesus? Yeah. What did well, you begin to do? Just begin to be faithful in what I did know. I didn't have to know everything, but the things I did know and God did reveal to me through people like T and my own study in God's Word, I was faithful to that. And then as, as I was faithful, God revealed more to me. And I just stayed faithful. And the main thing is I yoked myself with a man like T, with a pastor, somebody that could walk alongside of me and help me and answer questions. And whenever I felt like I was going, could possibly go wayward, they'd pick me up and help me. You know, doing it alone ain't real smart. Yes. Okay. Anybody got any questions for him for y'all before we take off? Or anybody got any questions at all that you may want to throw at him? Sir. You say you found faith. Like, do you do you keep the law, or did you just go off just having faith in Jesus Christ? What was the question? Do you keep the law, or do you just have your faith in Jesus Christ? I obey what I do know. Yes, but but that's the result of my salvation. It's not the cause of it. Okay. So instead of obeying the law in hopes that I'll be right with God, yeah. it, that that's what religion teaches. I obey God's laws because He saved me. Right. It's the result of it. So yes, but it's not because I'm trying to earn anything. It's because I'm I'm grateful for God saving my soul. But that's the whole point of the, the faith, right? Is the, the salvation is the to do what He commanded you to do. Yeah. So you can find so you need salvation, right? Well, salvation's already occurred. I'm obeying God's laws out of what He's done in my heart. He's He's transformed my heart. So now I follow what my heart's desire is, and that's to to obey God. So you, like you said, when you accept Jesus, salvation is given to you. You obey the laws or the Ten Commandments because there's 613 laws. So no man could do that. That's why Jesus came. And so I still, you need, need, his, I still need His grace every day. Because you yeah. do, so what I'm saying, you you do God's work because it's in your heart. Like you yeah. said, I wrote, He wrote yeah. the New Covenant and His commandments are on your heart, right? So you do it because the Holy Spirit leads you to do so, right? You have a choice still to follow. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. No yeah. doubt. And yeah. I still, I still need His grace. It's continuing grace every day. Yeah. Salvation comes yeah. once you yeah. accept Jesus. Yeah. Okay. Hey, well, hey, uh, hey, just give a hand to my wife and Camille and Mike. Mike Grill, all the burgers. Mike, love you guys. And so, uh, uh, Mike, Mike, you want to close this out? Yeah, I want to uh, say a few words. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate it. Give my hand for that testimony. <laughs> you know, and, and that testimony is real. And everybody talk about the laws and all that. It's, those laws are hard for you to keep. That's why you have to have Christ to keep you alive. And then when we do break the law, then we ask, we ask Christ to forgive us of it because we're all not perfect. We're not perfect. All of us went through a lot of stuff. You see what he went through? I went through coming up in the club. T went through. We all go through a lot of things. But there's a, a scripture in the Bible that talks about the spirit of the Lord that compels us. I just want to end it by saying that it, it's more than just playing ball, guys. And you wonder why they, we really not for the guys, letting them play ball and all this and stuff. You know, we're good people, but at the same time, we're trying to get you to understand that when you leave here from playing basketball, what do you do? Sometimes we come in and release stress. I'm ready to play ball. Y'all want to get it off. But what do you do when you put the ball down and you leave the play? Mm. All this stuff come back on you. And, and, and when we look at it, the spirit of the Lord compels us to show you guys love because we were once lost. We didn't know Christ. See, but our purpose of life is not to be about ourselves. Mm. When I got saved, Brother Richie got saved, like I said, my wife and all of us, we found that 
Christ showed us it's not about being saved and saying, hey, I got my life to live. It's my thing. I'm going to do my thing. God wants us to share that love, share that blessing. Mm -hmm. And that's why we're doing it for you guys. You know, I know the love is overwhelming sometimes, but where you gonna where, where you gonna find where somebody care enough for you to play ball for nothing, feed you and everything? That's the spirit of the Lord that compels us to do it. Mm -hmm. That's the love of Christ. That's why we do it. No strings attached, nothing like that. Cause we love you guys mm -hmm. and want to see you walk in your purpose. And we want to see you be kingdom men. Kingdom men are the men who care about their families, mm -hmm. who set the atmosphere for their generation yeah. and everything. You know, a lot of us taking one another lives and everything. I'm tired of seeing it. And that's why I'm here. That's why I'm, my wife got a heart. He tell me all the time. She'll wake up in the middle of the night. Mike, Mike, those guys over at the, at the rock, man. Spirit is telling me something about it. She just, she's just like a mama. She love you guys. And I said, what's up, baby? What's up? She said, I just, I just love them. So we just have a compassion for people like you. You know what I'm saying? Brothers, man. And we want y'all one day to just submit to the Lord, man. Because I'm telling you, I've been without him. I tried it. Mm -hmm. I thought everything I was doing wrong was right. I thought I was doing the right thing. But now, since Christ has took my life and changed my life, now I know it's not about me. It's about giving back to the community. Mm -hmm. You guys. Then you said there's something more than the life that we live. God had a purpose for every one of you. We weren't, we weren't created for nothing. We were created for a purpose. God got a purpose for each and every one of you. I know some of you got children. I know, I know you want the best for them. It's not all about worldly possession, but you want the best. You want to have the right mind. Mm -hmm. That's what I teach my son, having a mind of Christ. Learn how to function. Now, in this church, we're in a community where we could have just uplifted and left. But this church decided to stay in this community and serve our community. That's what we're doing. That's what God wants us to do. The Spirit of the Lord compels us to do what we do. Because it was up to me and my flesh, man. Ain't no way I could do it. I'd be like, I could be at home watching Fred Sam for the <laughs> Price is Right or something like that. Or uh, NFL Network. But the Spirit of the Lord in me compels me Come on. to minister to you guys. Come on. And that's what Rich, and look at his life. Look what he went through. Now he's preaching the gospel. Look at me, all up in the club, what I went through. Preaching the gospel. Look at T, preaching the gospel. Now we have beautiful wives who stand behind us, who standing with us. I mean, firm. So I'm just telling you, man, this is a serious thing. We just ministered gospel to a guy in Keystone. Anybody know Keystone over there? Yeah. We just ministered gospel to a guy over there three weeks ago. Two weeks ago, I went back to visit him. His wife said he passed away. She was just crying away. Minister to God. What if he had to submit his life to Christ? In two weeks, he died. What happened? Man, that's a terrible thing. It's real. Minister to gospel. Two weeks, he passed away. It's real, man. That's why we do it, because we love you guys. Ain't no strings attached. We worry about no money getting paid. We do this because we love you. Because we want to see something better for you. Yeah. Kingdom men. Kingdom men are the ones who submit to Christ. And want to walk that life right. I got tired of the life I was living. My grandfather pulled me out. And to this day I love him for it. Because the one for him, ain't no telling where I be. Okay? Take it serious, man. Every word you heard here today, take this testimony serious. Take everything we say serious. It's more than just playing ball. Cause when you leave that frustration, you come here and shoot when you leave, what do you do? You're back in the same old. You wait, come back Tuesday, Wednesday, same old thing. God want more than that for us, bro. Mm. We have a purpose. And we just trying to help you find it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Pray, pray it out, Mike. Hey, love y'all, man. Let's pray, let's pray, pray it out, y'all. Father God.